liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here alone. Um, I guess I need to start off by apologizing. Um, I don't want to start off by apologizing. I, I will start off another way. First, uh, let me um, welcome any new listeners from the local 251 International Brotherhood of Mouth Hitters. Uh, we went to a No Agenda meetup a couple of weeks ago, um, met some really cool people. It was, uh, it was fun. Uh, I had a good time. And, um, and there were some people that expressed interest in the podcast. It is, I suppose, a podcast community to start with, so that would only make sense. And, um, and now I'll apologize. <laughs> Um, I apologize for any new listeners for having to wait so long, and I apologize to the regular listeners for having to wait so long. Um, we had something come up, what would have been our following Thursday, um, like that day, and so, uh, Liberty Larry couldn't make it, and I didn't feel like doing the podcast, frankly. Um, and then, but then I kept telling myself, well, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get something out, I'll get something out, I'll get something out. And I just, uh, I've been having a really hard time motivating myself. I guess that's as much as anything what it comes down to. So, and, uh, you know, here, here we are still. So at least I, I finally got myself up to doing this. Now, all that being said, um, I think that this is going to be a very different kind of podcast than what we usually do. Because there's not really anything in the news that I want to talk about, at least not without Liberty Larry, um, if I can help it. I mean, I, I would kind of like to address the Kazakhstan-Ukraine um, stuff, and uh, and I will, just as a little housekeeping, point out that um, Stuart Rhodes from, uh, that we spoke about on the last podcast was, in fact, I guess, uh, indicted at this point. And that Ray Epps, um, well, the story is that he's going to um, appear before Congress in the January 6th commission or whatever. Actually, he'll be giving testimony from his lawyer's office safe and sound, and he still hasn't been indicted. Um, but at least there's been enough public pressure that they're having to, they're having to respond, at the very least. Um, in terms of why it's been difficult to to be motivated. Uh, it's this stupid pandemic that should be over. And and I'm just, I, I think like most people, I'm just really tired of this whole thing. So, you know, I was recently exposed to somebody who tested positive. I never got sick. Um, I, I felt fine the whole time. And it was, uh, it was at the end of a week. And so I told my office that I wouldn't come in on the Friday and that as long as I was feeling fine, I'd be back on Monday. And they told me um, that I couldn't return to the office without a negative test. And it, I don't know, it just comes back. I thought that I was taking enough precautions just by waiting through the weekend. That would have been, you know, roughly five days since I had been exposed. If I still don't have symptoms, then then I should be fine. Like, And it, it comes back to the whole thing that I keep being amazed that I have to say over and over again, which is, uh, I can't make you sick if I'm not sick. And the, the news on this is, is all wrong. Um, you know, we're just continuing with this thing and <clears throat> they're still pushing this fear of Omicron. And also I was corrected on how to say Omicron. Um, I was told it's the Greek letter. I said, yes, I know that. <laughs> um, and but I had always been told that it was pronounced Omicron, the Greek letter. Uh, apparently not. So I'm told. There's multiple schools of thought on this, I suppose. But I'll go with Omicron. It doesn't sound as dangerous dangerous as Omicron anyway. So that's a that's a good reason not to say Omicron, I suppose. Anyway, um, so I was talking with my mother about this, and you know she was talking about oh well you know they keep going on about. Uh, number of cases and, you know, everybody's getting sick and, and so on. And, and I, I said the you know, at this point, the news should be that Omicron isn't dangerous. The, the news should be, hey, 
we've we've made it. <laughs> we're through with this thing. Um, you know, we're back to a uh, a virus that is only really dangerous to people for whom everything is dangerous. Right? Like to normal people out there, Omicron is is very mild by all accounts. Of course, there's exceptions to that, but th- that's not the point. You don't you don't make policy based on exceptions. Um, and I, I think that, you know, the, the news should be, Hey, we have a virus that's, that's tearing through and infecting lots of people, but it's making very few of them really sick. And it helps boost immune immunity into more dangerous variants of this virus. Uh, so, you know, yay for us. We've gotten through the worst of it. Um, we'll be at herd immunity soon enough if we haven't already been, and I would argue that we'd already been, but anyway, um, but, and, and she said, well, that's not what I'm hearing on the news. I said, well, I'm sure that that's true. Fear is still the focus for the media, for pharmaceuticals, for government, and you got to back up and look at how each of these groups benefits from the fear. Uh, and all right, so for media, I, and I'll just try and, and you know explain all this as best I can or as best I understand it. Um, I'm sure there's more aspects and nuance to this that I don't entirely understand, but in, at least in broad strokes, the media benefits from keeping you afraid through clicks or viewership or however you want to look at it. Um, they make their uh, their living off of advertisement. And the more people view the advertising, the more money they make. And so the more people view their program or go to their website or whatever, the more money they make. And by keeping you afraid, you are encouraged to go to them to find out how to keep yourself safe. The fear benefits the media in that the media is the source of information for most people. And so... If you want to find out how you can keep yourself protected from this thing that they're making you afraid of, then you also need to go to them. So they can tell you what you need to do to protect yourself. And of course, um, a lot of that advertising on major media um, is the pharmaceutical uh, companies. Um, Big Pharma. And of course, they have an obvious benefit from this. It's just sales. And we've seen numbers over and over again since the vaccines came out and and so forth of the tremendous, tremendous amounts of money that these companies that are producing these vaccines have made. And, uh, you know, it's, and it's real easy to make money. Um, if you can have a product that there's a government mandate that people buy, (laughs) Um, now, of course, you know, government stands to benefit monetarily from this because lobbying money from pharmaceuticals helps fund campaigns and so forth. And, of course, lobbying money from pharmaceutical companies is, um, is a strong encouragement to continue to make public policy that benefits the pharmaceutical companies. Um, or public policy that benefits the pharmaceutical companies is a strong encouragement for pharmaceutical companies to fund your campaign. Whichever, you know, it it works in both directions. But the main thing the government gets out of this is just more and more power over your life. Uh, The more laws are created, the more regulations are um, put in place, the more control they have over each and every one of us. And um, I I think that that is... uh, (laughs) That is a benefit that everybody seeks, is more influence... Um, more power uh, to to control others. Um, I mean, I hope that that's not true, but I think that that's in. I, I think that that's really in all of us. That, but it's certainly in the nature of government to try and accumulate more and more power, more and more influence, um, to uh, affect more and more, just more and more. Um, and so, all of these groups that have been pushing the the fear porn the um the be very afraid that this is going to kill us all they all stand to benefit 
and uh, and they all have benefited tremendously, um, particularly pharma uh, pharmaceutical sales and um, and government power. And we just need to be aware that that's why. And so, in fact, since the the groups of people that that most look to um, to tell them what's going on, aren't doing what they should be doing. I'm going to do it now. This pandemic is over. It's over. It's been over for a long time. But I'm going to officially declare the end of the pandemic and tell you, just go back to your normal life. There's no need to be afraid anymore. Besides the fact that all of these groups, everything that they've told you all along the way that was going to help keep you safe, turns out not to keep you safe at all. And we've been documenting that all along. Go back and listen to previous episodes, um, and you'll see over and over again. I, I will I will put my record or the record of the Liberty Mike podcast up against Fauci's record any day, any day. Um, you know, cloth masks don't work. We were telling you that a year and a half ago. Um, that uh, that actually masks of any kind have little impact on the transmission of the virus, um, even surgical masks. N95 is a little bit more questionable, but it depends on exposure time, etc. And all of the testing that's done. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to rehash all of this. It's it'll take too long. Um, but you know, we've had videos taken down because we said that the um, vaccines wouldn't prevent you from getting and spreading the virus um, because that was misinformation until it wasn't. Um, the and I understand things change along the way. Um, certainly, Omicron uh, has seems to get around the the vaccine better than other variants have. But and this is another point that I would like to make actually at this point because it we've said it before that this is the first time we, that we've that most epidemiologists tell you that you don't vaccinate, you don't do mass vaccination during a pandemic, um, and that you do select vaccination of the most vulnerable people. And then you let everybody else deal with the pandemic. So people that are have less to fear uh, from the from the illness. And I, I think this is another example where um, vaccination actually uh, prolonged the virus um, and assisted in the develop or the evolution of variants. And we've seen that each of the variants along the way, at least the major variants that have been talked about the most, Delta, Omicron specifically, that they continue to get better and better at getting around the vaccine. And again, I would point out that if you can still get the virus when you've been vaccinated, and you can still spread the virus when you've been, been vaccinated, that all you've done is you've created this interesting little Petri dish um, for uh, natural selection to occur for the virus. And that the more people are vaccinated, the better the virus will become at getting around the vaccination. I mean, it's just... <laughs> it just follows. It's common sense. It's If you, if you understand how uh, natural selection works, it, it's the only... It's the only thing that makes sense. And going back to my own exposure, I have a group of people that come over here on the weekends. We play some games, and um, so they, you know, they canceled on me last week after I told them that I'd been exposed. And I, I had the same kind of experience at work, actually, too. That you know, if you want a, a perfect example of how effective the vaccines are, um, the people that were most afraid of being exposed to me. We're the vaccinated people. And you just kind of wanted to say, but hey, remember, you're protected. Like, you got the vaccination. You're protected. But even they know that they're not. And, you know, it's just it just speaks volumes for the uh, efficacy of the vaccines that the people that are most afraid of being exposed are the people that have already been vaccinated. Of course, you know, some of that is just personality and, and risk assessment and risk tolerance as well. I mean, chances are at this point, if you haven't been vaccinated, that you're not real concerned about this anyway. And it's not to say that the people that were, um, that have been vaccinated that I know that wanted to stay away didn't have a good excuse for it. I mean, Reasons are reasons, and I, and I understand, you know, your 
personal concerns about um, that you can't afford to miss work or, you know, whatever the case may be. But wasn't the point of you getting the vaccination so that you didn't have to worry about that? And as for myself, um, when I talked to my doctor and they were, they said, well, why, why are you coming in for a test? And I said, well, I've been exposed. And they said, well, are you experiencing any symptoms? I said, no. And they said, well, why do you, why do you want to take a test then? I said, well, cause I have to, to go back to my office. Um, and while I like to work at home from time to time, I don't like to make a habit of it the, because then there's no separation between my personal life and my work life. And I want that separation. So I, I like to work from home, you know, less than half of the time that I'm working. <laughs> I, I want to go to the office. I want to get out of the house. And I need that it, it, I, I need that interaction with other people anyway, like that face-to-face -face interaction. I'm one of those people that sits in the office, and instead of, you know, dialing the person on the other hall from my phone, I get up and walk over there. And part of it is that it's hard to... I, I have a hard time sitting still. But part of it is that I'd rather interact with people face-to-face. -face. Um... And I'm, I'm getting sidetracked again. Sorry. Uh, what I told my doctor was, at this point, um, I would need the test to tell me I was sick. Because without a positive test telling me I was sick, I wouldn't know. Now, it came up negative. Um, but I kind of wish that it had come up positive. Because then I could go around and using the same logic that so many others out there are using, I could say, well... I didn't even, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't even realize that I was sick, um, and I, I think it's because I didn't get vaccinated. I had a really mild case, like so mild that I wasn't even aware of it, um, and I, I'm, I'm sure that that's because I didn't get the vaccination. Because you hear the same thing from vaccinated people all the time. Well, you know, I got it, but I didn't get real sick. Um, and it, I, I didn't get real sick because I was vaccinated. But the logic is the same. It's, it's... Um, <clears throat> it's a confirmation bias. You don't know how sick you would have been without the vaccine. There's no, there's no evidence to suggest that you would have been any more sick without the vaccine than you were with the vaccine. The majority of people don't get really sick. And at this point, there are studies coming out of Germany, Israel, uh, Denmark, I think, suggesting that there's an increased likelihood of getting Omicron if you've been vaccinated, but it's been more than 90 days. That's not much of a vaccine. So in the long term, people who, what this information would suggest is that in the long term, people who haven't been vaccinated will be healthier than people that have. And I, you know, I don't know what else to say about this. I, I'm just, I'm just tired of the whole thing. And it's time for everybody to move on and stop being so scared. This is a virus that at the worst of it had a well sub 1% mortality rate, well under 1%. Um, and in fact, uh, at least for the wild virus, um, and I'm not entirely sure about Delta, I, but I think that it wasn't any worse, um, the fatality rate was about 1 in 1,000. And um, the information coming out, and of course the CDC lady, Walensky, was trying to backtrack some of this, but um, I remember early on CDC data suggesting that the average number of comorbidities <clears throat> for people who died from this virus was four. Like, healthy people, for the most part, may have gotten really sick, may have even ended up in the hospital, and some of them, I'm sure, died. But for the vast majority of healthy people, this wasn't dangerous from the very beginning. It was never really dangerous. In fact, what has turned out to be the most dangerous thing related to this pandemic has been the government reaction to it. Suicides are up. Uh, violent crimes are up. Um, poverty is up. Uh, um, drug and alcohol abuse is up. Um, uh, a whole bunch of psychological disorders are up. Like mental illness is up. Uh, these things uh, affect a society far more deeply than, um, than people that are generally, generally sick dying from a virus. And, uh, you know, it's again, 
I think another example of the government sacrificing the youth for the for the aged. And it's not that I don't think that those lives are valuable. Um, but the long-term health of the society depends on the youth, does it not? And most, most people, most uh, grandparents, wouldn't they rather that their grandchildren had better lives than they did? I think that that's true. Well, sorry, this wasn't much of a news recap. It was just really a rant. But this needs to be over with. And the people that are supposed to tell you it's over, they never will. And so if you want it to be over, if you agree that it's over, then you just need to start living your life as normal again. Because there's no sense in doing anything else. You're not really at any more, in any more danger today than you were two years ago. And so it's time to go back to that. And I don't believe in this new normal crap. We don't want a new normal. We want to go back to normal. We want to go back to the way things were. And we should have never, never deviated from that in the first place. And I understand at the beginning that there, there were a lot of unknowns. But we very quickly learned that the reaction to the virus was more damaging than the virus itself. But a, pun, a bunch of people got the spotlight that had never had the spotlight before, and a bunch of people saw an advantage that they could gain from playing this up and making you fearful and making you turn over some responsibility for your life to them. I mean, even today, they're culling hamsters in Hong Kong. A year ago, they were culling mink in um, in Europe. Uh, people are still terribly afraid of this thing that shouldn't cause that much fear. Shouldn't cause any more fear than your general feeling about worry, general feeling of worry about being sick. I mean, for some reason, um... With anything else, we just treat this differently. With anything else, you don't go to work if you're too sick to go to work. And too sick to go to work means something like you are stuck on the couch or you are spending the whole day in the bathroom or you are just doubled over and unable to get up and go. Um, but for some reason, with this virus, being positive with no symptoms is too sick to go to work. In fact, it doesn't even take that. If... Somebody you live with tests positive, even if they have no symptoms. You somehow are too sick to go to work. And at the same time, um, they, the hospital staffs, they're, they fired people that wouldn't get the vaccine, won't allow them to work even if they're healthy, and they're bringing people back in that have the virus, that have tested positive, but don't have symptoms. Or that it's just been five days since they tested positive um, in some places. This whole thing is upside down. And, and it, it seems to me that everybody at this point that is paying any attention has to be aware of it. And so there's only th one thing to do now, and that's just to go back to normal life. Tell your government to stick it and just go back to normal life. Because that's the only way this thing's going to end. And I suppose that's all I have to say. So, um, I apologize for the long wait between podcasts, and uh, um, I hope that you were at least uh, entertained by this one, although this doesn't represent what we usually do. And I expect that we, we will be back to normal uh, on Thursday. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope that in the meantime you um, follow us on Facebook, uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Like and share. It's a big benefit to us if you like and share. Uh, you can always contact me um, at michael at thelibertymike.com. And you can visit our website, the uh, same domain, of course, thelibertymike.com. And uh, we expect to, both of us, <laughs> be back on Thursday, maybe Friday. You know how schedules are. We're just bad at them. But we're, you know, we were doing really well until this last couple of weeks. Um, and just some unforeseen circumstances. But uh, in the meantime, try to stay free. 
Tchau.